In this video, we're going to take a look at how to take user input using scanf, which is going to be one location where we're actually going to need to use addressing to be able to store data from the input inside of a variable. So let's take a look at how scanf works by taking a look at an example of taking a few inputs for some variables. The first thing that I want to do is I want to take in a variable for this int i. To do this, I'm going to say scanf. And then I'm going to provide to it a string that has a format of the input that I'm expecting. So in this case, I'm expecting just a single integer to be input, which is percent %d. This is the same input formatting as the one that we see with printf. So to get an integer, we use percent %d. And then we tell scanf where we want to store the value that we get as an input. I want to store that value in i. However, I can't just put the value i here. I have to actually tell it to go to the address of i and place the value there. To do that, I put the ampersand character as we discussed in pointers and addresses. So it's going to take the value that it receives from that input, and it's going to place it in the memory location of i. From here, if I want to see that value, I can do a printf and say something like um, the value of i is, and then print out that value, just like this. Let's take a look at what that does. So I'm going to clear this here. I'm going to go ahead and compile and run. You'll see that it sits here waiting for me to input in an integer. I'll input one in, and it gives me this output that the value is 150. So that shows you how you can take a very basic input. Now, there's a few different things that we can actually do with this particular scanf function. For example, suppose you want to take in two inputs. You want to take in one for i and one for j. Well, what you can do is you can simply add another integer to this string here. So we add another percent %d, that's another integer. And then I give it the location to store that second integer, which will be j in this case. Again, remembering that we want to store in the address of j rather than just the variable name itself. So now when I do this, you'll see what I end up getting is, you know, wait for one integer. And it's still waiting because I still need to input another integer. And once I do that, the code will complete. Now, of course, I didn't print out the value of j. Let's just go ahead and add that in here so you can see. Um, the value of j is, and then uh, percent %d slash n and j. There we go. So we'll recompile here. Oh, sorry. I said print instead of printf. Let's uh, fix that here quickly. There we go. And now when I compile this, I can go ahead and run. I enter in the first integer, the second integer, and you say I get those outputted onto the screen now. Now, a few interesting things to note about scanf. It is only looking for values based on white space. So in the example that I showed here, I did 10, enter, and then 15, enter. And that's how it was able to distinguish between those two integers. I can actually input them all in one line with a space separating them, like this, 10 space 15. And you can see that that also works. So, so long as it's separated by any new line character, it will consider that the next thing to scan for. And it will continue doing that until it reaches the end of what it's supposed to scan for, and then it continues on to the next bit of code. That's generally how that type of idea is working. Now, a few other interesting things that we could talk about is actually different formats for actual scans. So for example, in this case, when we have this percent %d, percent %d, it's looking for just an integer and then white space and then another integer. I can actually specify a very specific format. And what will happen is scanf will work with a pattern matcher. So for example, suppose I wanted to get like a fraction, like an integer divided by another integer like this. I can specify a format that looks like this. And what's going to happen is it's going to look for that exact pattern. So now when I run this, what it's looking for is it's looking for integer number one, that slash character, and then integer number two. And you see that that generally works. Now, what's interesting about this is that if you were to run this and do spaces instead, it wouldn't find that second integer because it's not looking for a space. It's looking for that slash character. And because it doesn't find it, it doesn't actually scan that second integer. So this is something interesting to keep in mind. So you can set up this format in whatever way you really like. You could do it comma separated values like this. And if you do something like that, what you'll get is the following. If we input in, you know, one comma two, do you see that it parses up to the comma and then everything after the comma, right? But if you did something like one space two, it doesn't parse the second one because it's missing that comma. So that gives you some general intuition towards some different ways that you could use scanf. 
There's a lot of different, you know, patterns that we can try out here and a lot of different ways that we can do it. Main things to keep in mind is that it's matching basically based on the variable type. So percent %d is integer, remember percent %f is going to be float, and that's generally the way that this is going to work in terms of scanning. So this gives you a bit more intuition towards taking user inputs and some different ways that we can use this addressing for variables. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.